Uh, hello, my name is Robert Beck, and uh, I've been working on uh, learning about sea star wasting disease and sunflower stars. And so basically, over the last couple months, I've been learning how to kill sea stars. <laughs> So the big question is, what is sea star wasting disease? Um, prior to the beginning of this project, I'd never actually heard of it. Um, and so this was a pretty important question to me. Um, so it turns out that wasting disease, also known as sea star wasting syndrome, is a generic term for a set of symptoms where the sea star will um, pretty much lose its, it wastes away is how it's described and I could tell you about the symptoms but it would be more effective to show you. So, there's a video made out of some footage that I've taken um, of sea stars in the lab. Let's say arm detachment. <laughs> So like uh, some of those symptoms that were shown, the sea star just loses body trigger, it, it eventually disintegrates and this has been happening um, all along the Pacific coast of North America. Um, reports began coming in in summer of last year, um, around September, and they've been streaming in thanks to surveyors and citizen scientists. Um, who've been trained on this all along the coast and it's ranging from San Diego to Alaska um, affecting multiple species of, of, of echinoderms not just Pycnopodia, um, the sunflower star but also especially along the coast more so they're seeing it in Pisaster um, the common intertidal sea star and along with some others but within the sound here um, Pycnopodia seems to be the most visibly um, obvious um, because like one week when surveys are, are taken um, there will be a lot of sea stars there and, and within two weeks that whole population or that community will be just demolished. They won't even be there anymore. All that will be left are these white mats of, of bacteria and ossicles, um, the remains of their skeletal systems. And the disease seems to be spreading um, according to some of the surveys um, in a northward fashion. So the big question is, 
right? What causes it? What is the cause of why? Why are so many C stars being affected? And so I'm sure a lot of us can come up with all kinds of reasons, possible factors that could play into this. Um, and so if you dig into the, the literature, I found that wasting disease has occurred several times in the past. Um, these are each different instances that have been recorded uh, beginning in 1978 in the Gulf of California. Um, this particular species was decimated. Um, again, in 1997, these are some of the other species. I'm just going to go through these pretty quickly. Um, and that's around the west coast of Vancouver Island, 2008. Um, again, in the 80s, this is actually an urchin that was affected. Um, the Mediterranean, astropectin, it's a type of sea star, was also affected. They don't have an, a particular event, but they notice a decline between um, gaps when they were surveyed in the 80s. And in the Caribbean, um, the urchin diatoma and the larum um, in the early 80s underwent a mass mortality event, which had huge ecological comp um, impacts because they were the primary grazer of macroalgae since because of overfishing which took out all the herbivorous fish and so without the the urchins a lot of the coral reefs were overgrown by macroalgae and they're still in recovery today so if you noticed anything a lot of these events happened in the 80s 1997 or 2009 2008 and so those are all El Nino years with warmer than average sea, sem sea temperatures. Uh, so all these authors um, included that in, the, in, their, in their journals, in their articles, um, as a possible correlation. Um, and they also found, a couple of them found various strains of bacteria um, that they were able to culture. And, and so we kind of have an idea of, of what to look for, but we're, we're different in this um, particular event that's ongoing right now because we are not in an El Nino cycle. It's, the temperatures seem to be normal and it's not active. So we went to the drawing board and decided to tease out the, the two major possibilities. Whether it's something in the water that's non-biotic, just general environmental factors, or pathogenic. Um, so pathogens are transmissible from one individual to another, so they need a host. Whereas an environmental is not dependent on hosts. And so we have our, our design that we, we tested to find out if we could figure out whether it was environmental or not. By doing this, we we got some we subjected healthy stars from a healthy site that was not observed to have the wasting disease present, and we subjected them to three treatments. The first is direct contact, so we included in their tank also a sea star from a site where there was disease um, found, uh, and then. Our second indirect was with water from that six site, we had the two healthy individuals in, incubated. Um, and in the control, we had two healthy individuals in healthy water. And we let it run for a couple of months. And here's what we found. Basically, um, Our, our control and the water treatments were pretty much the same. We lost one tank of each um, after a month of, of the experiment. And we're not really sure why, um, but the other, all the other tanks were, were fine. Um, whereas in our direct contact with the 6C star and the healthy C star, we had 100% 
mortality, everyone died within a couple of weeks. Um, um, also, um, took daily observations and categorized the severity of their symptoms um, based on kind of that video that I showed you, some of those symptoms. Um, with the more common stressors like the curling, sometimes they do that, I think just out of stress and not necessarily out of the, out of the, the disease prevalence. But as you can see, the, our direct um, six star treatment was pretty dramatic. And with five being mortality and zero being normal. Um, So this is just the average time to mortality, which again shows um, <coughs> that our direct contact treatment was pretty different. So what we concluded from that is that the wasting disease is a pathogen being passed most effectively from star to star, host to host, and it's not just something in the water, otherwise we would expect our water treatment to be remarkably different from our control, which it wasn't. And so now the next question is whether it is, uh, what kind of pathogen is responsible? So we have tests going on or that will soon be implemented to find out whether it's bacterial or, or viral. Um, so it brings us back to the question to help refine our question of what is sea star wasting disease.